turning right, uh, turning left onto Scout Lane, we go about a quarter of a mile down the road to a, an area which is Scout, the Scout Res. The Scout Res is on the right-hand side as we go down the, the road. A flagpole in the center of the, of the lane signifies a death of a scout some years ago. The flag was erected by the Dodge Manufacturing Company back in 1954 in honor of a scout that drowned in one of our local lakes. The res sign was erected by Jonathan for his Eagle Scout project. It says the res youth camping nature reservation and he designed and built it for his Eagle Scout project. Some of the trees that you may see there would be an alianthus and there's a uh, wild cherry and one of the oaks and uh, catalpas and several different kinds of trees just in this entrance to the camp. As we come around, you see the ranger's residence. That's where Lucy and I live, and that's where the kids were lived. lived in. It also functions as the reservation office, so uh, this is where Lucy does all of her, the, the reservations are, and usage fees of the camp. Everything is operated out of the house. Res means the reservation. It's short for the reservation. The main club in honor of a man called Jernigan. He was a local state senator. The brick walk was put in by a boy who was about 17 years of age as one of his projects for scouting, as was the bulletin board. The landscape design was done by a Purdue student who donated her time to give us some landscape designing that we could follow. It's really a beautiful entrance as we come in for this angle. Russell Moline, Russ Moline was a, is a neighbor of ours, or was a neighbor of ours, and uh, when he died some years ago, people missed him so much that they decided that the landscaping around the lodge would be done for Russ, and then a stone, a natural stone plus a plaque was put to, in honor of his memory. Russ was a, just one, one of those real good people in this world, and he's deeply missed. The lodge overlooks a stream called Lang Creek. The lodge itself is about 60 feet long and 30 feet wide. The main lodge, the main upstairs building, is a meeting room, and it's used just about every weekend of the year with young people coming out. The table, all the picnic tables, were built by scouts at various times, as was that brick patio. So the young people of the area have done a tremendous amount of work out here at the Mishawaka Res. Looking from the porch of the lodge, you can see the creek, the stream, which is called Lang Creek. We've got a lot of little waterfalls or weirs as it goes underneath bridges and across the various rocks as it goes down to the St. Joe River. The stream itself is about eight miles long and drains some of our local hills and goes down to the St. Joe River on its way to the Great Lakes. An old totem pole that came from one of the campfire girl camps. On it there's a thing so called XR Trail, start. That's where we have it begin on our exit trail, 1.2 miles around the camp for exercise. You see old Woody Woodpecker at the top, that's, uh, that is wood, that's not a real woodpecker. And if you look in the distance, there's old Paul Bunyan, one of the great American folk heroes, uh, looking over the camp. He's the guy that drug his big toe through and created the great Missouri River and uh, took his friend, the ox, Big Blue, and dug out the Grand Canyon. So there's a lot of folk history about Paul Bunyan. As you leave old Paul Bunyan, we approach the main walk bridge which is the main access to the meadow. It goes across the Lang Creek, and you can just about, if I keep quiet, you'll hear the stream puddling over the, uh, over the rocks and stones that are in the stream. You may not believe it, but that stream will come up sometimes and actually lap the top of that bridge. 
That's how high it comes in flood time. Every camp right, has to have a campfire bowl or storytelling area. This is ours. This is our campfire bowl. This is where I come out in the evening and tell those stories about the camp and where the kids sit on those uh, railroad ties that are back there, as you guys in England call them, railroad, railroad sleepers. And uh, they sit there and listen to the stories and they watch skits and they just have, have sing-alongs while the fire just roars away at, in the evening. It's always a pleasant time for kids to be able to sit down and listen to somebody give a good story. This is our meadow. I don't want to talk too loudly because out there there's a groundhog or sometimes known as the woodchuck. He's a burrowing animal, burrows underneath the ground about 20 feet. He's a vegetarian eating predominantly the greens around here and this is kind of different for us to be able to see him because they're very very nervous and very very shy but we're sufficiently far away from him look at him now he's got his head up and his tail straightening out he's getting our scent or he's getting some notion that we're around here he's just one of the many small animals that are in, on this camp This area, we just saw the groundhog, and this area we came up to photograph because it's called the meadow. This is the main play area for, for the kids that come out here. This is where they play the wide games, such as baseball, or they have some catch games or some special games that young people have. And so we just keep it mowed, so there's not a lot of briars or anything else like that. The trees, and these trees that you're looking at now are the, uh, distinctly American trees. They're called the Osage Orange. Osage is an Indian tribe, but the trees themselves are very hard. In fact, they have the hardest wood in North America. They give out the most British thermal units of heat of any wood in North America. They're harder than oak or hickory or walnut. They're just a very hard, densely packed tree. And the only animals that use it for food are the squirrels. The fruits themselves are totally inedible for man by kids as they walk under these branches in the moonlight. They look as if they come right from the Wizard of Oz or from uh, Sleeping Beauty or any of those fairy tale stories where they have wicked witches and snarly branches. Okay, you're on. The bird you're looking at is an American robin. In England they, they strut, whereas ours hop. He's only one of the many birds that we have here. The we, on the camp, we have some 10 different campsites, and each one of them is named after one of the characters in a local story called The Legend of Princess Misha Walker. One of the main predominant characters there was a chief called Pokagan, who was a rival to Princess Misha Walker's father. Our campsites all pretty much look like this. We try to keep them open, mowed, with a fire pit and the uh, the picnic tables, and just this area for tent camping. This is where the young people would pitch their tents and stay for the weekend. Surrounding it are several groupings of wildflowers. These are wild, they're not planted. Uh, some of them are called a, beer uh, a bee balm, and others are just plain old daisies, and they just, uh, but they're very, very attractive and they come up wild. Small, the small white flower over here is called Queen's Anne Lace, after, of course, the English queen, Queen Anne and her lace. It's an American product. It's not a European product, but the Euro it's area, these areas, America was settled first by the Europeans, and so they gave a lot of the counties and states names that are associated with the old country, and Queen's Anne Lace was one of them. This is a picture of one of the trails that goes around the camp. All we do is just mow the trails wide enough so people can walk without getting wet in the high grass. 
you're approaching an area which is a one of the exercise spots on the 1.2 trail and that is where you do sit-ups you put your feet underneath the bars that are protruding there and uh, then you're supposed to about five to ten sit-ups I do about three and get pooped out uh, but that's all right you do it for fun anyway and the flowers as you see along the trail are all wild none of them are planted although a lot of the trees out here were planted by young people at various times. Again, you've got the uh, thistle, we've got the bee balm, we've got wild blackberries, and different. I, I wouldn't know all the different kinds of trees in the background. Also, you can see some of the small trees that were planted by kids this, this year. There's a sweet gum there that you're focusing on right now. And that is unusual for this area, so now we have some 32 different kinds of trees on the camp. And we only count oak once, and we only count maple once, and uh, we got 32 different kinds of trees. Deal of persuasion, we have talked Mr. Murray, the ranger, into oh showing us how God. to do one setup. Oh, yeah. oh my goodness, that's it, beautiful. Ooh. Thank you, Eric. Look at that. <laughs> one of the signs of one of our many campsites, Chief Elkhart. It's at the extreme southern part of the camp, so it's one of the most remote of the campsites. And we're going down now to have a look at the stream that this campsite borders. One of the back parts of the stream as it enters the camp, at this spot, the interesting part about it is there used to be a, a still where they used to distill mint. All this area used to be mint farms. And at this point is where they had a still and they'd get the water from the stream have it, uh, and use that to cook the, uh, the mint. That's where all those rocks came from because they were indeed the foundation of one of the, of the mint still. These are some of the pine trees. These were planted by scouts back in 1939. And it's kind of interesting through here because a lot of those kids went to war and we don't know how many of them came back from that war in 1939 to 1945. But the cross lighting on here is really magnificent. The trees are just beautiful. And it just makes you really think about the young people that came here and planted trees many, many years ago. And I'll zoom down. This trail runs about the entire length of the camp. And it was used primarily as a ceremonial trail with uh, kids in Indian regalia escorting other young people to some very impressive ceremonies at Chief Elkhart Camp. To one of the little campsites way on the east side of the camp. The little birdhouse with the five on is one of our eastern bluebird houses. We're trying to track them, which is a rare bird in this area. They, uh, we've been only been able to get wrens this year. The webbing on the one tree is inhabited by an insect called the army caterpillar. They breed in there and they hatch their eggs and then the caterpillars all swarm and then they fall to the ground where they mate again and uh, create some more for another year. But they make that netting as a protection for the young. There's Queen Anne lace here and on this other side there's a little trumpet-like flower and the, uh, which are very, very pretty, of which I don't know the name. <laughs> Some of the grasses that you're seeing right now is called Timothy, and in the background there, there's another tree called a mulberry tree that has a small white berry that the animals really like, and of course it was for the silkworms out in uh, China. Beyond that are the pine trees that Jonathan and I planted many, many years ago when they were just about, the trees were about uh, eight inches long. We came out here on a spring day and just planted hundreds of them. These are, these are the results of our product many years ago. The fields along one of the trails, and it's just loaded with Queensland lace. We thought you'd like to see it because it's so very pretty and so very colorful. Is that thistle too? There is a little thistle. Is that thistle right there's there? thistle, and then there's also the butter and eggs and all kinds of little wildflowers in there that you may not. But this is a very attractive area. At other times of the year, there's other flowers that come up. Just about every month, there's a different kind of flower that comes up in this area because this is almost reverting back to the original prairie. 
This is one of the burrows that was made by a woodchuck or groundhog. And we're just, uh, we're just fortunate that we came upon this just, just this afternoon. But you can see how large it is. And it goes 20 feet in, under the ground. That's where he has, keeps his young. They have a nesting chamber, they have a, a latrine chamber, they have a food chamber. And they, uh, it's all underground here. Got this it. area is called uh, Staghorn Sumac. The Indians used to use the berries and so soak it in water, and it makes a drink that tastes something like lemonade. It's uh, kind of a yucky lemonade, and all these little fur bits come off, and they call it staghorn sumac because it looks like the horn of a male deer. I know you guys in England use these for ornamentals, but these grow wild around here, and they're something of a weed tree. They're not exactly something that we would cultivate. Because this is the only tree on the camp that's been mutilated or damaged. And this was not done by a child, it was not done by a young adult, it was done by a guy who was 38 years of age. Fortunately some kids caught him, told me about it, we got him, fined him 25 bucks and threw his butt off the camp. It's a, so when you see carvings on trees, don't always automatically presume that it's the, the kids that do it. A lot of times it's some stupid adult. Again, of one of our many weirs or small dams that we have. But most interesting is the bridge that goes across the stream. That was built by a boy of 17 years of age who had a concern about some people who would not be able to walk across a, the, the first bridge that you saw, would have, have the ability to get across it, the stream with some dignity. He said it was for the walking impaired. So he built the trail, he built the bridge, so people that have a walking difficulty to get across the stream, as he said, with some dignity. Just listen to the just listen to the sounds of the creek and the birds. That noise is Dick slapping mosquitoes. Downstream from the bridge of the walking impaired is our main walk bridge, the first one that we came across when we started this film. A few years ago, a boy had a concern about people who were walking, they would fall off the bridge, so he built the, the handrails. He and his buddies came out and they put the handrails on the bridge. Now, a few years prior to that, the whole bridge collapsed in the center from, the, from a flooding. The flooding had come down and washed over the top of the bridge and collapsed the bridge. We had to shore it up and then restructure the bridge to what it is now. But you must realize that this stream, as you can see from the damage of the sandbags that we got in there, comes way across the bank and sometimes laps and goes over that bridge. Close to the tree, but we're gonna show you the sycamore tree. It's an American tree. The reason it's called sycamore, they say, is because the bark is somewhat green and dark and it looks sick. It's a tree which, as it grows, it sheds its bark. You can always tell the amount of moisture you've had the previous year by the amount of bark you shed because the tree then grows that much more rapidly. If the traveler is in danger of, without any water, you can put a peg into the tree and supposedly the tree will get off enough sap to give you enough water to slake your thirst for a few while, for as long as you need. But uh, they tell me it tastes just like water, but I don't know, it's got a light sugar content. I've never tried it, but I've read about it. Never have really wanted to try sycamore water. It's a beautiful tree.